Well, staying on this news, we wanted to know how some of our youngest voters feel about these recent incidents and generally about the age and health of many of our elected officials, especially as Gen Z and millennials become an increasingly large and important voting bloc for both parties. Here's our conversation. Who feels that a majority or a good percentage of our politicians are maybe too old for the job that they're doing? There's a possibility. Age can be a taboo topic, but it's undeniably an important consideration for many voters, including these 19 to 28 year olds from both parties who I sat down with in Pittsburgh. A problem I have with um, the age of certain politicians is that they have been in office for around like 20 to 30 years and just have held the power. Um, and I personally think that's just like not really representative of like a new generation that has been formed. A recent poll found that 49 percent of Americans believe the best age for a president is in their 50s, decades younger than the two current frontrunners. How much concern do you have that someone who's so much older than you and your peers has any idea what matters to you? I do think you start to see gaps and certain issues, um, not even on a partisan basis, but it's embarrassing to watch some senators ask questions to tech executives. It seems like they're clueless. I think it's concerning, especially when we're talking about decisions that are being made that will affect us 10, 20 years down the line, when respectfully, some of these politicians may not be around to see the effects of their decisions. By the end of this year, 16 senators will be 75 or over. Two of them, Mitch McConnell and Dianne Feinstein, have had recent high-profile health challenges. I think what's really scary or concerning is that uh, we don't have access to these officials in the same way that those around them do. And I wonder if we get the, the full picture of some of their health and capabilities. Would you be in favor of some type of cognitive test? for elected officials. And I think that like some cognitive tests could be biased. I also get nervous about the idea of a cognitive test, you know, who decides that, who administers it. I think a cognitive test can be good if it's very general. If it's very detailed and like you said, biased, then I wouldn't be for it. But if it's something as simple as like, can they drive to the local supermarket? Like, I don't see why that wouldn't be something that we could put in place. And just to use that example, because you just said it, do you all feel concerned that some of our elected officials literally couldn't drive to the supermarket? Yes. Yeah. Muslims don't even have licenses because they've been in office for so long. Most of them have been in office so long, I'm not sure they've been to a supermarket <laughs> in quite some time. Do you think that a fear of being disrespectful in some cases is keeping us from an important conversation about if somebody is fit or not to serve? I would say so. I think we just need to be able to acknowledge that it's not disrespectful if I don't want someone in office anymore. When it comes to running the country, it's very important that they're able to do everything. And I don't think you're really disrespect anyone by telling them they've done a good job previously, but like now it's time to hang it up. Alienating young voters could spell trouble in 2024, especially for President Biden. Millennial and Gen Z voters went for Biden over Trump by 20 points in 2020. I strongly believe that the Republican Party as a whole must give my generation to the table. Brylin Hollyhand is the co-chair of the RNC's inaugural Youth Advisory Council. He thinks resonating with this voting bloc is key to winning elections. Uh, within the party of why we underperformed in the previous midterm elections in 2022. And to me, it seems simple because you have the Republican Party completely ignoring my entire generation, this huge, huge, huge voting bloc that's so crucial to winning any election, period. For this group of voters, politics is a team sport that could benefit from recruiting new players. I almost feel as if it's narcissistic for some people to think that, like, even into their old age, like, they're better than the generation that comes next. Hmm. It's similar to sports where it's like, just quit while you can and while you are on top instead of, like, degrading your legacy. We recently had a, a significant debate over whether or not it was time for our quarterback to hang it up and to pass it on to some young, younger blood. Is that disrespectful to say that you want what's best for the team? Obviously, a lot of thoughts from these young voters spurred by these recent events, which is why we went out and had this conversation with them. But as we made the point in the piece, it's important to both parties that they at least 
make this voting bloc feel represented in the right. issues that they care about and the platforms that they're campaigning on. And this issue always comes up. One of the challenges is young people just don't vote in the numbers yes. that older people do. Absolutely. So it's kind of like, if you want to make change, you got to show up to the polls. Which too. I, was actually something I really appreciated in that conversation. It was very nuanced. As you heard, they're not mm -hmm. all just for cognitive tests or an age maximum or anything like that. And in fact, it wasn't even just young people have to run or we have to vote young people in. It was my friends need to go to the polls. Right. It starts with that. That's Absolutely. the first step. All yeah. right. Thanks, Savannah, for bringing us the conversation. Definitely. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.